one two one seventy. Now, I'm not expecting everyone on the call just to go, ah, oh, yes, of course, one two one seventy. Savvy DBAs on the call probably may recognise at least the one two one at the start, and normally error messages in the twelve thousand range are actually related to some sort of sequinet problem, like a TNS, you know, one two one five four, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. We are talking about SQLnet here, and here's the question. We run a reporting query against all of our databases from a central location using DB links. And, and this is a common thing I see. Someone has, say, a monitoring routine or some sort of investigative routine as a DBA, and they reach out to each database, and they either, you know, they create a database link to database one, and they query that, and they database link to database two, et cetera, and they simply go around through all of their databases. If one of those databases is down, we get Aura 12170, how can we avoid to skip those Oracle databases which are down? So one thing I should specify first is error messages that come out with 12170 or in this kind of range, even though they come back to you in the database as Aura 12170, often they're not really an Aura error message. In fact, if we ran it at the command line, if you do a TNS ping on a, on a non-existent location, you don't get Aura you know, 121 something or other, you get TNS dash as back. And so, when it comes back to the database, it gets turned into an aura message, but that has some implications as to how you're going to trap it and handle it. So let's run a demo. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is a, a couple of entries from my own personal TNS names to aura file here. And you can see here, I've got two. I've got one called dead. And as the name suggests, this is a database that actually doesn't exist. I've simply picked an IP address that I know is not active on my network and a random service name, which obviously doesn't exist, but that's irrelevant because it's not, I simply won't be able to reach that host anyway. So that's a genuine dead database. And this one called dead two, which we will come back to later in the demo, it's on host four zeros, which actually is obviously this machine. So it actually is contactable, even though the host is four zeros, but the service name is fictitious as well. But let's just focus on dead for the time being. Now, this demo might take a little bit of a while to run because I have to show you the timeout. So at the host level, if I do a TNS ping on dead, as you can imagine, it's sitting there busily trying to reach out to host 192.168.1.99, which is not responding. And so we get to sit here and twiddle our thumbs waiting for this to respond. And as you can see, we actually got TNS operation timed out in this case. This was 12535, but in effect, it's uh, when it comes to Oracle, you'll see the message has been changed. So Let's assume the database was meant to be up. We didn't know that TNS ping result. I just wanted to prove it to you. So I create a database link dead using dead and now I try query it. So I'm now going through that same process of reaching out to the TNS names to Aura, finding the dead entry, trying to connect to it through the SQL net and obviously I'm not getting any response. So this is what you would see from inside the database. And there's the problem that the questioner came up with. Aura 12170, I got a TNS connect timeout. How do we solve this? You might be thinking, well, I'll do it this way. I'll capture, I'll declare an exception called cannot get there. I'll remap it to when I get 12170, which is the error we got, and then I'll run it. I promise you this, is, I think, is the last time we have to sit and wait. And so now this is perhaps our first attempt at a workaround. I'm trying to get view tab at dead. I'm going to fail. That's going to raise oral 12170. That should fall down into the cannot get there exception, and we'll just simply put out he's dead, Jim, and we could then move on. So this is the standard mechanism we use for capturing an Oracle exception, and we can use Pragma exception in it to map unknown exceptions or unnamed exceptions to particular error message numbers. And the reason I was talking so long is I knew what was gonna happen. These particular kind of exceptions where I simply couldn't reach out across a database link do not get caught. You can't remap them with exception in it. We still blew up our actual anonymous block there. That's a problem because now we can't handle that exception in the conventional manner. So what do we do? I thought about, let's think of it another way. Let's run TNS ping on the target to see if it's available. And then if it is, then we'll actually proceed and actually run a query against it. And if it's not, then we could then skip it. So we need to know in advance before we even run our query, if that link is going to work. And it's a bit of a chicken and egg, you know, how do I know if I can run a query against it? Will I have to run a query against it? So we're a bit stuck. And the other thing is, you know, unless I'm running a lot of shell scripts and the like, how do I do a TNS ping? I'd like to do all this from inside the database if possible. I'm going to do a little bit of trickery here with an external table. I'm going to create a procedure called set link name. And all it does is writes whatever I pass in 
to a file name called link linkname.txt in the temp area. So I'll run exec set link name db18, and all it does is add the word db18 into that file, c temp linkname.txt. Now I can create an external table, and what the external table is going to use is make adva take advantage of that file, linkname.txt, and it's going to get passed into a preprocessor script called tnstest.cmd. What does that contain? It just sets a few environment variables because you have to when you're running Windows. And then using a little bit of DOS batch magic, it actually cats the file contents out. So it spits out the word DB18 and pumps it into TNS ping. So it's going to return the output of PNS ping as a select statement from this external table. If you haven't seen that kind of use of the for loop inside of MS dots, yeah, it's a bit of a geekery kind of thing, but a little bit of Googling uh, will get you by. So now when I do select star from link checker, it actually is running TNS ping. And so if I want to see if a database link is fine, all I have to do is do a select star from link checker and I could simply do where result like okay, for example, and I'll just pick up this line here. I could pick and choose whatever output I wanted. So if I want to test each database, let's go back to testing our dead guy. So I'll set the link name to dead, all done from inside the database. Select star from link checker. And as you can see, things aren't looking so flash, but one thing I hopefully won't get is an actual error because I'm not actually trying to query the database called dead. I'm actually just running a TNS ping on the database called dead. And once it times out, that output is gonna come back as the result from my external table. And you can see there's the output, there's the select. I didn't have a pause in there. And it actually came back there as a whole output. As a query now, I can simply say select where result like okay. If I get no rows, then something's wrong. And I could actually use all the other output to send some information out. If I get the word okay, I'm pretty much good to go. I will put a little tiny caveat on that. Remember back at the start, I said I had a TNS entry called dead2. Now, one thing that's important to realize what TNS ping does, TNS ping is just a basic reach out over the network to see if a box responds. So dead2, as I said, is a IP address that I can get to, but it's for a totally fictitious service name. When I run TNS ping via my select link checker, I get OK. There is no database called QWE. So you need to be aware that you might want to consider very carefully that TNS ping is perhaps not good enough to actually uh, guarantee that a database is up and running. If I saw this TNS names result equals OK for dead2, I might then go ahead and create a database link called dead2. And as you can see, there's no guarantee that that's going to actually reach me to a database. You actually get a TNS list and does not know the service. So as I was saying, TNS ping is one step in terms of validating a database is reachable, reachable but it's not the entire uh, process. One thing you might want to consider doing is in your little TNS testing batch file, is one of the best ways of seeing if a database is available is running SQL plus with a fictitious username and password. Because a database must be up and running and servicing connection requests in order to tell you that that is actually an invalid username and password. You could actually modify that batch file that I showed you to not just do TNS ping, it could say do a TNS ping and if it responds with okay, then do a fake SQL plus connection attempt. And although it sounds counterintuitive, I'll then query for a result of Aura 1017. That would tell me that the database is actually up and responding to requests. So that's how you could handle inaccessibility of certain databases all from within the database. And as you can see, external tables with preprocessors is a great way of accessing all sorts of facilities outside the database and still querying them as if they were simply SQL results. I'll call exec, exec sync link, oh, that's I'll run exec sync, let's try it for a third time.